Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Sunday School lesson. And today's topic is we're going to be talking about uh, Jacob called Israel. And this is the third lesson of uh, four that we got in the in the book of Genesis. And this lesson today, we're going to be taking a good, uh, good close look at Jacob himself and some of the things he went through and some of his challenges and so forth. Uh, so before we begin that, uh, can somebody unmute Deacon Lestine Anderson so she can start us off in, with a word of prayer? I am unmuted. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for another mm -hmm. gathering of your believers to study your word. We thank you, God, for our lesson today, because we know in Jacob's struggle, you were in control and you were with him. We thank you, God, for each and every one that is on the Zoom or whatever manner in which they are tuning in with us today, that we will study your word. And from this lesson, we will gain strength and guidance for our life and our relationship with one another. We thank you for our teacher today. Bless him. Open up our minds that we will see the word that you have for us today. We ask a special blessing upon this gathering and Sunday school and the rest of the day. We thank you and praise you, God, because with Jacob, he had a struggle. We have a struggle. And we thank you and we praise you, knowing that you are with us and our struggle as you were with Jacob. Thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you so much for that prayer. Uh, she, oh, she hit on a lot of things we're going to be talking about today, so thank God for that early on. Uh, as you can see, from the administrative portion, uh, those who are, are, are by mobile, again, this is nothing new from what we've been going through over the last couple of years. If you buy mobile or landline, the microphone can be muted upon entering. However, if you want to uh, speak, just uh, type it in the chat or hit the star nine to rate, raise your hand, ask a question, and we'll respond. Uh, if your microphone is muted, then someone from the tech team will unmute you. And again, raise your hand and we can go from there. All right, the next slide is a uh, quick overview of what we're gonna be talking about. And De Deacon Anderson prayed so well on Jacob. And today we're gonna really dive into him. Um, last week, Deacon Butler talked about the family, talked about the two twins in particular, uh, the family dynamics and how um, one parent favored one over the other. We already know what happened with Jacob and Esau. We already know too that the, the younger was chosen to serve the, I'm sorry, the elder was charged to serve the younger based on birthright giving up and all that. So this week we're gonna take a, just a, a, a different look and we're gonna look at him. And in, in his walk, his walk is mainly after so long, he is preparing him and his family to go and meet his brother. And so that should be interesting in that the last time they met, he was on the run and he was going away from the brother. So guess what now? Now he's going to meet the brother. So here we go. So everything that's already been laid out <clears throat> by scripture, we're starting to see it. We're starting to see it come to pass. Uh, again, Jacob was called Israel, and we'll get into that. We'll take a deeper look at the scripture, and we'll apply the lesson and how. I got some questions in there with regards to us, as Ms. Ms. Anderson said. We're, we're, we're like Jacob in some regards, too. It's a lot of things we struggle with. And so how do we deal with our own struggles when we know what God has called us and told us to do? And even if he ain't, what do we do and how we deal with our struggles and how we manage that? And lastly, we're going to summarize it and close it. I have a, uh, a, a quick video that talks about God's peace. And I know for me, that's one way to deal with that stuff is to, is to ask for peace and to search for peace and to go and get it. Okay, so with that being said, next slide. <clears throat> okay, I've already hit on some of this, but I'll go through it again. Uh, who is Jacob and his story? Again, primarily this lesson is focused on Jacob himself. Jacob's old and new names and their meanings. Jacob struggles uh, with the angel. 
And even in the lesson, we knew of the location of where they struggled, but we never know, even though Jacob asked the, the name of the angel, but we never knew who that, who that was. And some scholars say it possibly was God himself. We really don't know that. Scripture don't tell us that. Jacob struggles with humans and God. And why are we struggling? What are we struggling with and why are we struggle? Us. So I'm, I'm putting it back. We, we hitting Jacob, but at the end, I'm, I'm wanna turn it back to us and how we could deal with, how we deal with stuff and, and as far as struggling and so forth. Okay, next slide. Okay, I just took a quick, um, like I always do within my lessons, I like to look at the, the, the purpose of the, of the book itself some of the historical uh, uh, features of the book, why the book was written. And Genesis primarily is it would provide, provides an essential foundation for the remainder of the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is the first five books that were written by Moses, was the fir very first five books in the Bible. Um, especially when you know, you're dealing with newer believers, you know, th those are some of the, one of the locations you can start with the first five books, along with the, the first five within the New Testament, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and so forth. Uh, for now, it all goes back to that last sentence and that through the seed of Abraham is what God made his promises uh, through the nations. And Jacob is one of those people. It just so happens. Next slide. Can you hear me? You keep going in and out, so sometimes I can't. I'll keep trying to keep up. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll allow for that pause. Um, I will, if I didn't say it before, if you have any questions or you want to make any comments on anything, uh, just raise your hand or just uh, type some, some info in the chat. Just let us know where you're at and then I'll pause, stop, slow down, what have you. Otherwise, I'm going to continue to go. Uh, what I didn't say at the beginning, what I will say now, I typically like to go anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes from a lesson perspective. And again, uh, a lot of that will be predicated upon you all, if you guys speaking then we still will gauge it. If not, we're gonna run through it. And, uh, and if there's no questions, we're gonna summarize and we're gonna close. So the history begins. Okay, now you're back. Okay, for some reason I'm, I'm breaking up. I'll keep breaking in and breaking out. Uh, can y'all hear me now? Yeah, you can hear you now. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me know. My wife is looking at me too. Make sure my junk is working good. So, all right, I'll continue. As I said, Moses is the author and his historical reliability is inspired by scripture and it's certified in the New Testament by the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles. So Genesis, again, is the start of the entire Bible. But, that, but as we know, especially those of us on here who've been uh, studying this stuff for a while, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming back and dying and, and, and burial, resurrection and everything. So with that being said, um, any questions? No, okay. Let's go to the scripture then. Ms. Brown, you online? Good morning, everyone. Today I'll be reading Genesis 32, verses 22 through 32. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jabba. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Amen. All right. 
Thank you, Ms. Brown, for reading that. Um, as he read the, the scriptures, and now we'll do it, we'll, we'll take a look at analyze uh, some of the words as far as what, what was said earlier. The entire uh, Jacob being called Israel, as I said at the beginning, before when uh, at the beginning of the, 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 the lesson, is Jacob is preparing to meet his brother Esau or his twin brother. And he hadn't seen him until it's been a while uh, since they you know, went through the issue of the birthright and all that stuff and with his parents. Uh, now he's about to meet him again. And the angels of God met him and Jacob obeyed God's instructions by leaving Lebanon and returning to the land of Canaan. So Jacob took all of his family, his, his children and everybody and he left, okay? Again, really, he was already, you know, commanded to leave, but he really was running from his brother Esau. The reason, the region where his brother Esau lived, so guess what? You know, he's going there, and again, he, he sent by God. He, he knew that he deceived his brother to get the birthright in the first place. The, young, the, the, the older brother was to serve him, so Jacob was dealing with all this at the same time. So God sends the angels to assure Jacob of his continued protection. So one of the lessons, even with all the things that Jacob did prior to and even now, is that God was with him. And he you went out again, Brother Lot. Brother Lot, can you hear me? You went out again. Okay, I'm not sure what happened with Brother Lot, but we'll try to go for what he has until he comes back in, hopefully. Um, hey, buddy, I'm sorry about that. Our internet is just going crazy this morning. Normally it works like fine, but it's going crazy. Uh, I'm, I was just analyzing. I think y'all missed probably about the last three minutes of what I was analyzing in uh, the first sentence. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go back and try to re regurgitate what I said uh, before the internet went out. Uh, Jacob is uh, again preparing to meet his brother Esau, and he's taking his whole family with him at the instructions of God to leave. And the reason he's going to is is where his brother lives at. But the the, the point takeaway in this, even in, even the mix of everything, Jacob is trying to figure everything out. He's going through all these different things. We already know last week we talked about how he you know, took the birthright. Uh, we already know his name is Deceiver, which we'll see later on in, in, in these charts. And his name was changed to Israel because he struggled with God and humans. But even with, in the mix of all that, God sent his angels to assure Jacob of his continued protection. That is probably one of the main things I want y'all to understand in this lesson. Even when we're going through things ourselves, the Lord is with us and he will protect us. We just got to turn to him and focus on, on what he has for us to do. Jacob was fearful and distressed as he approached Esau's territory. He wondered if he and, he and his family would suffer violence at Esau's hand because of Jacob's deception of more than 20 years. Remember, he don't know. He ain't seen his brother. He don't know how his brother going to react. So he's got to figure that thing out. And so Jacob prayed to God for help. As he pray, as a prayer is a pattern of all believers in life threatening situations. And his prayer teaches us four things. One, he's reminded God of his promise of care and protection for those who, got, who follow God's will. In awareness of, of his unworthiness, he expresses this gratitude for all God's past blessings and help. He prayed for God's deliverance. And lastly, he stated the ultimate reason for requesting God's protection to fulfill God's covenant purpose for his life. Okay. So he reminded, you know, I'm out again. All right. Yeah, he, uh, his, the, the essence of it was that he was grateful and, and even in the mix of all that he was going through, uh, the fear the fearfulness he had, the distress he had, he still knew where his source came from. And he knew. Knew that God. 
Okay. Can y'all hear me? This yeah. thing went in and out again. All right. Turn to the next okay, turn to the next slide. All right, let's get to the, the analysis of, of who Jacob is and what his name means and all that, which is one of the another key principles of this entire lesson. The name Jacob, which is implied a crafty deceiver, was now changed to Israel, which means one who strives with God. Followers of Christ are sometimes called the Israel of God, the God's strivers. God doesn't want his people to be passive, but earnestly to seek him for his blessing and his grace. So even in the mix of all that Jacob did, he still continuously sought him, even as he fought with the angel. He wanted the angel to bless him, and he wasn't going to leave the angel until he does. Sometimes when we're going through like that, we have to do that too. Continue to make sure that we continue to push on until we get that blessing. Jacob's night of wrestling with, with God resulted in God's blessing on his life. From then on, he knew that his own life and well-being were dependent not on his own devices, but on God's help, guidance, and blessing. Another point that we could take away too, God's help, guidance, and blessing. His descendants will, will be reminded of that point later in scripture with the principle of not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So at the end, it, it's all about the Lord and the, and the power and the spirit of God. Victory in our lives for all God's people comes the, the very same way, even today. We may not wrestle physically with, with the Lord. We are to seek him earnestly and persistently in prayer, confess our sin, and ask for forgiveness, hunger and thirst for kingdom, for his kingdom, and close presence, desire the reality and power of the Holy Spirit, and pursue a life of true faith and righteousness. So as we pursue him and his, his purpose, then he is going to give us the grace, the mercy to be able to endure. We can't do it in our own strength. And as we we saw throughout the, the beginning of Genesis all the way through, even through this lesson, the descendants, even the chosen, God's chosen people, they decide to do things their way. But when they realize and start listening to what the Lord had to say and start obeying him, then things started changing. And that's the same with us today. If we don't listen and we want to do what we want to do and we don't let the process work, see, God is about order and we have to stay in order in his will. And we get outside of his will, we get outside of the order, then things go away and then things get, get worse before they get better. Any questions thus far before I move on? Any comments? Y'all been quiet. I know I've been in and out with this internet, but uh, everybody's been quiet today. Okay, I don't, I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, nothing in there. Let's continue. Let's go to our first question. Why did Jacob struggle with humans and with God? Why did he struggle so? We've been studying these, these uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for the last three weeks, and we've had some great lessons to include what we're studying right now. So why did Jacob struggle? Anybody? Okay, and if you want to um, speak, just raise your hand and we can unmute you or we can or you put in the chat and we'll read your conversation. Okay, I see Dr. Grace, so I'm going to click to unmute you. Uh, I, I think the two things that um, that caused Jacob's struggle um, the, the first thing was um, his, his, he was always scheming against people. And, uh, and, and the second thing is uh, he was proud and, and filled with self-reliance, depending on himself and, and not depending on God. Okay, those are some good points. And let's see if anyone else. I don't see anyone else hand up and I don't see anything in the chat. I think he's frozen again. 
Okay. Well, while he's coming back on, yeah, those are some good points, like uh, Dr. Grace said, um, you know, struggling with, this goes back to relationships, when you struggle with both your fellow man, but it also shows that he struggled with God as well, so that was an excellent point. If there's no one else, I guess we can move on to the next slide. I think, is there a question on the next slide? Yes. So Brother Lot had wanted us to ask the question, what what are you struggling with today and why? And so that's kind of like a personal reflection question, but I want to give you all a few moments, moments to think about that. What are some things that you are struggling with today and why? And if you feel comfortable sharing it, you can. If not, of course, you can just meditate on that. And I think Brother Lot is back. So Brother yeah, Lot, I'm back. Take back over. Hey, man, I tell y'all. <laughs> well, I feel like we're shaking our heads. We've never had our internet act this crazy like this, but I guess the devil is trying to make sure y'all don't get this, but y'all gonna get it. All right. Dr. Grace, I think I, we, we heard some of what you said. Uh, with, we heard about being proud and Jacob was always a schemer. And I don't know about you guys. I think we all can attest even on this in this lesson. Uh, folks that we're dealing with that, that have those similar characteristics. Can y'all hear me? Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. We can hear you. You, you keep talking. Um, yeah, folks that have those similar characteristics, I think, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I know I have a tough time with folks like that. And I think if we, and sometimes if we ain't careful, we we proud too. And we try to scheme too. Folks try to get what they want when they want it, and they do whatever they got to do, just like Jacob did. So I think one of the humbling uh, points about preparing for this lesson is that any of us can be Jacobs at any time. And and for those of us who think that we can't, then, you know, we, we, we probably got some issues already. But again, I think that's why we serve a, a, a mighty Lord that's, that's forgiven, that's merciful, and that allow us to come in and repent of our sins. And then he can cleanse us from all kind of unrighteousness. And as we, we just heard in the previous synopsis prior to the, the, uh, the phone going out, is that we are to be the righteousness of Christ because at the end of the day, it's all about him. Okay, let's go to the next question. What's some of the ways we can work through our struggles with others in and out of the church? I'll say prayer. Prayer. All right. What else? And it looks like we got recognize our role in the problem <coughs> and seek to become better and seek guidance from someone you trust and tell the truth and pray that God reveals the truth to others. Walk in truth, huh? Tell the truth and that God will reveal it. That last part is very important because we try to figure stuff out and we think we know, sometimes we don't and we have to trust him and then allow him to, to do it. And then also be in a position where we can actually see and hear that. Sometimes we, we take ourselves out of, out of position and we can't hear and we don't know what's being said because we're not in position to, to receive it. Good point. Any more points? Any more comments? No? Okay. Uh, let's go to the, uh, what y'all learned from today? Even though we've been a very quiet audience, but that's fine. What have y'all learned? What'd you learn? How can you apply what you learned through Jacob's lessons?
Okay, I think Deacon James was trying to raise his hand. Go ahead, Deacon James. Oh, good morning, thanks. Um, I learned that uh, from the beginning of the story of Jacob, and we and we see today is a powerful lesson to all of us. I know it's in my family today, we all fall in the role of Jacob. Uh, we have families now that need to be reconnected. But even through all our deceive, uh, uh things that we do, trying to uh, inherit all the things that our wills and things that our family left from. I know in my family, I knew that uh, when we had issue with property and all that, I said that would never happen to me. Uh, my family, but when it comes into money and all that, we can see ourselves being just like Jacob. And we today, if we stay connected to God, even though somewhere along the line, we know that we have done what we should, and we stay in that relation with God, we'll be just like Jacob. We will be blessed. And through that blessing that God blessed Jacob, he was able to restore the family. And I think I can see that example in my life today. So we stay connected to God. And that took a long time for all of this happen. But we may be faithful that God will bless us and the family someday will be united. Thank you, Deacon James. And I think um, uh, Sister Braxton or Brother Braxton had her hand up. So I just unmuted you, see if you had a comment. Okay, and while they're coming on, um, there's well, some things. I think that uh, we have to realize that God's ultimate plan will be carried out. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen, and yet we have to be faithful that we will be obedient to, to his plan. For example, with uh, Jacob, you wouldn't have thought that all of these things had well, we know because the Bible said it, all these things have been planned for him to do in the beginning. And all and a lot of these things were wrong. And we would have thought, why, why is God um, allowing all of these things to happen? But we have to realize, and it's difficult, that he, his plan will be ultimately carried out and his purpose will be met, although we may not understand it at a given time. Thank you. All right. And then we have a few things that came into chat, Brother Lot. We had someone said, um, tell the truth and pray that God reveals the truth to, uh, to others. Patience is a virtue. We must not give up. Wait on the Lord. And then finally, God is a forgiving God, and he will not fail us. All his promises are true. Thank you, Brother Bala. And, uh, as we get ready to close this lesson, let me read for y'all uh, chapter 33, verses 1 and, and verses 4 and 5. And it really sum it up once I read it. Before, Don't play the video yet, but let me read it, and then we can play it. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and beheld, Esau came, and with him 400 men, and he divided the children and Leah and Rachel and the 200 maidservants. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times and his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, who is this with thee? And he said, the children which God hath graciously given thy servant. So at the end, when he saw his brother, fell down, kissed him, and they embraced each other. And that goes back to what Deacon Harris James was saying about the reconciliation, even within families, and trusting God, as we've heard from, from the other speakers, and letting the Lord do it. So with that being said, uh, you can play the video, and after we play that, then Pastor Davis can come on and close us out. Lord, I want to be 
Right. Reverend Graham, I think you have some technical difficulties too. So there you go. In your presence. Let me hear you. In your presence. In your presence. everybody Amen, amen. Uh, we want to thank, I think it's Brother Lot uh, that was teaching this lesson today. And uh, it's an excellent lesson uh, talking about Jacob called Israel. Jacob called Israel. And we know that God is in the business of transforming us, giving us new names. And we know that Jacob uh, was uh, a trickster, one that um, tricked his brother out of his birthright. Uh, and we also know that he uh, was in trouble with his father-in-law. But we know that Jacob's life needed to be changed. He wanted to reconcile to his brother and that took some struggle. Uh, in order for us to overcome, we have to struggle with our old selves. We have to struggle with sin and we have to overcome. So we see that uh, Jacob, uh, was in a particular place where he uh, secured his family 
But then he was not alone because that was a stranger, a man that came alone and wrestled with him. Now, some people say it was an angel, but whoever it was, this person was a manifestation of God. And we know that they wrestled and they wrestled and they wrestled. And that's what we have to do. In order for us to be blessed, we have to wrestle against our old selves, our old nature, wrestle against those sins that so often beset us. And uh, because we are in a struggle, we are in a struggle, we are in a spiritual struggle. But in order for us to become what God wants us to become, we have to put up a struggle. And we see that Jacob put up a struggle and him and this unnamed man wrestled or this angel, whoever that person was, it represented God. And Jacob would not let the man go until he blessed him. And he asked Jacob, well, what is your name? And he told him that my name is Jacob. And he said, now your name shall no more be called Jacob, but it shall be called Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with man, and you have prevailed. In other words, you've wrestled with man, you wrestled with God. And that is now that you have prevailed. That was Jacob's desire. Jacob's desire to be what God wanted him to be. He did not want to be his old self anymore. And so the angel recognized this, that you have wrestled with both God and man, and now you have overcome, and your name will no longer be called Jacob, but it shall be called Israel. God is in the process of changing names. You know, he called uh, Abram to Abraham, Sarah to Sarah. Uh, and he also changed uh, Saul's name to Paul. So anytime God changes our name, it gives us a new identity, gives us a new purpose. It gives us a new direction. Uh, so we should understand that as Christians, we too are in a struggle. And God has, through Christ, changed our names. So no longer should we be called sinners. We now are called saints because now we are in the body of Christ. And saints means that you're no longer a sinner. You're no longer what you used to be. And you have to wrestle to become all you need to be in Christ Jesus. So as we go forth, let us understand that our identity has been changed from sinners to saints. We are in Christ now. We are called saints. That's why we should address one another as saints. We're in the same family now. That means that the Holy Spirit has come upon us and has transformed us from our old selves to our new selves. And having a new self means we got new names now. So we should address each other, not as sinners, but as saints. And so again, we see that Jacob was blessed. You and I can be blessed but it has to be a struggle. And that's what people don't want to do. You have to struggle with yourself. You have to struggle with your sins. You have to struggle with your demons in order to overcome them so that you can be all that God wants you to be. This was a struggle and this was a name change. You and I have struggled. And so since we have confessed hope in Christ, since we have been born again by the Holy Spirit, you and I have struggled and we have won through Christ, and now we are called saints, all right? We are called saints. Saints means that we are what? We're sanctified now. We are followers of Jesus Christ now. We are in the family of God now. That means that we don't talk about each other. We don't undermine each other. We embrace each other as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And this is what the world needs to see. It needs to see transformed people. Uh, so don't get don't get offended with people tell you uh, uh, how you used to be. Well, thank God you're not like you used to be. Thank God you have taken on a new direction, a new name now. And hopefully that we can walk in that newness in order to be an attraction for other people who also wants to uh, become new in Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. So again, we want to thank you for this lesson. And uh, may God bless you. May God keep you. Let us pray. Father God, we come at this hour to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your ever loving kindness. And Lord, we pray that we'll continue to understand that in wrestling with ourselves, that we continue, Lord, to uh, lay aside those sins that, that so often beset us and help us to run this race. Run it, Father, that we can have that new name, new direction, 
and saw the light, our light can shine before all the world. Father, as I pray for all of the saints, I pray, Lord, that there are some who are sick, that you touch them. There are some who are bereaved, that you touch them. There are some, Lord, who are convalescent, you touch them. Father, we pray that you would bless our uh, church service today. We ask, Lord, that you would touch somebody, shake somebody, stir somebody, save somebody. Because, Father, we know that you have a new name for us, for old creatures. We're old creatures, but now we become new creatures in Jesus Christ with a new direction. Now that we're closing out our Sunday school and entering into worship, we pray, Father, that you would bless us as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen.